So when uh, reading your materials, we read that uh, for their assessment, students have to produce an evidence-based synthesis, evaluation and practical dissemination. So we were wondering if you could tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so this, again, trying to, to adopt all those values that I said uh, were important and build upon those skills. I wanted people to look at the evidence behind practices in the workplace they were most interested in. So whether it was uh, they personally do yoga and they think that that should be used as more widely as a workplace stress initiative or looking at um, what's the influence of a certain type of training or development opportunity or strategy of leadership in a given outcome. And so the whole the whole assessment is designed so students can pick whatever it is they're interested in and apply the skills that they've learned. So as you say, there's three kind of core components. The first one is, is sort of a curated literature review. So it's, it's quite brief, but the purpose is can you demonstrate that you can prioritize the most important sources, acknowledge the role of lots of different types of sources and bring the evidence together to say something? So what does the evidence as a whole tell us about that? And again, encouraging people to consider not just the academic sources, but practice and all the other kind of expert opinions and all those other kind of uh, evidence based um, or sources of evidence rather. The second, and I think this is really important because it's done as a sort of informal skill, but not necessarily done normally in a formal and structured way, is to look at the quality of evidence. And so we do one week on uh, what you can call risk of bias tools or quality evaluation tools. And I encourage students to pick out a few sources from that literature review, the ones that they think are the most important, and evaluate them according to a risk of bias or quality evaluation tool. And again, it's these, can they, can they get that way of thinking that they can pick the appropriate type of tool for the evidence they've got? And again, try and tell us something with that. So for example, in the literature review, they might have highlighted a body of evidence or a source of evidence that was extremely popular or well-cited or whatever. But then in the quality evaluation, we find that actually this is a quite substantive risk of bias in a certain direction, or we, we have concerns for a certain reason. And then, you know, how do they weave that into a narrative to tell us something? So the third component is trying to practically disseminate that evidence and whatever message they have from uh, their, their first two sections. So, for example, it might be that this practice works, but it's only for this type of population or sample, or this works for this outcome, but not this type of outcome, or stop spending money on doing this because it just doesn't work full stop. Um, and so this takes the form, I encourage everybody to be creative. Um, so it can be a poster, it can be a video, it can be a webinar, it can be a blog, it can be some training materials, basically anything that just isn't plain, boring writing. I encourage people to say, if you were a practitioner, how would you want to hear about this? And so we had lots of really creative things. Some people did formal <coughs> professional videos. Um, some people did little blogs. Uh, some did some vlogs. Some did some workplace posters. And the whole point is to demonstrate then that, that whole process. So you can prioritize the identification of sources. You can evaluate them. You can synthesize them and you can apply them. And it's designed to kind of bring together all those skills. And what I particularly love, um, and I'm incredibly grateful. So uh, the first cohort of students were, were fantastic in taking all these random things that I threw at them. So for example, in the first seminar, talking about scented candles for what seemed like a ridiculous amount of time. And they've been very kind in allowing me to share some of uh, their submissions as well. So what I think is particularly important for these sorts of, of open educational resources is you see the whole the whole thing in context so in addition to you know the general marking kind of guidance and advice and assignment structure I gave the students uh, several of them kindly allowed me to share what they submitted so you can have a look at some of these different examples and have a look at you know how did that work out in practice and I think that's really that's a that's a I think is a really important thing to be able to see. So um, do check them out as well. I think they're really interesting pieces of work.